Hey, I hope you're good. In today's video, I want to talk about finding your niche and your style in photography. And before we get into that, I just want to sort of give a bit of an overview to this, because this is one of the most important things in photography, especially if you want to make a living from it. And I've perhaps not done the best job of explaining this in the past. And having your niche and style has several great benefits. One is marketing is incredibly easy. And two is that you become incredibly good at photography. You cannot be a good photographer or more to the point, a great photographer if you do not have a very specific niche. And to sort of put that point into a different context, let's take academia. When you do your degree, you learn a little bit about everything. It's very like high level. You do a bit of this, bit of that, bit of that within one subject. Say you choose physiology. You learn a bit about everything in physiology. Nothing too detailed, just the top level. Then when you go into your master's, you learn a little bit more about a little bit less. And when you go to your PhD, you learn a lot more about a lot less. But that little bit that you know about suddenly becomes your thing. It's what you know, and you know it better than anyone else in the world. And this means that when a job comes up for you, you are one, going to get it, and two, you're gonna be paid very handsomely for it. The same is true for photography. The more you know, about the fewer things within photography, the better you will be at them. You do not need to know how to do everything. And even in, for example, food photography, which is what I do commercially, you do not need to be able to know, do or know everything about food photography. All you need to do is be within your little bubble in your lane doing your thing. And this is how you can achieve good fees. For example, when a big brand wants to have a big campaign shot, they want the person who is perfect for the job because they're a multi-billion pound dollar whatever company. They do not mind what your fee is, they just want to get it right. So yes, there are fewer jobs out there, but the jobs that are out there are better. But although there's more jobs if you do a bit of everything, there's also more competition, lower pay, worse clients. I've done both. Niching down is the better way to go, but it is scary. So much so that when I did it, I had a side hustle of doing weddings at the time, and that sort of kept me ticking over until one day I just went, I hate doing weddings. Um, and I just sacked that off. Now, I'm a good wedding photographer. I can shoot a good wedding. Nothing ever goes wrong on weddings that I shoot. I can shoot the wedding, shoot the stills, direct the video, do the whole thing. It's a breeze. I'm pretty good at it, but it is not my niche. I'm good at doing the job but I'm great at doing graphic food photos, and that's not as seedy as it sounds. Um, it's, it's just the style I work in. And this is the thing, so I know quite a lot about weddings. I can walk into a room and meter it with my eyes. I can tell you exactly how much flash you're going to need based on the color of the ceiling and the distance of it and any color cast in the area. I can work all of this out in my head because I've done it hundreds and hundreds of times, but I don't know as much as those wedding photographers who charge 10 grand a day. I am not that good. I have not put all of my spare time into it. I have experience, I've done it a lot, but I'm no expert. I'm no expert at food photography either though. I'm not an expert at food photography. Put me in a restaurant, it's not my strong point. I can do a good job, but it's not my strong point. Put me in my own studio doing extremely graphic images for an ad campaign, that is my area. That is my area of expertise. That is where I shine. That is where no matter what comes up, I've got it nailed it's gonna be okay. I don't get stressed, I don't worry. All we have to do is create the image. Now that all sounds very nice and simple, but how do you get to that point? And for me, it wasn't a cognitive thing and I would really advise you not to do it the way that I did. I just happened to be reading a magazine and went, I like Hockney, Hockney's cool. Oh, I also like pop art. Yes, pop art's cool. I like food, food's important. I want to be a graphic food photographer. This is just a random thing which came in. So I've always made money with photography. I've never had the problem of not being able to make an income. The problem I had was I wasn't able to do the level of work that I wanted to do. I've always had aspirations of doing the big campaigns, the big shoots, the big meaningful sort of right home to your mum work. But I never got that because I was always just doing a bit of this and a bit of that. And you know, even as a photographer, I did portraits and I did headshots, but I never really niched down. You know, the difference is like if you're a pet photographer, you do pets, but maybe your niche could be, I put the owner of the pet behind a curtain, drop the curtain, and at the moment the dog sees the owner, click the button, and that's the portrait you get. That could be your thing. That could be, and you could master that. You could have it done on timers with triggers and all sorts of things, and you know, really master capturing that reaction and understanding the, the amount of time that the owner needs to be away from the, you know, all of that fine detail that 
Your average pet photographer wouldn't know, but if you go all the way in, they'll absolutely know it. So that that's the real difference. And again, you might be going, yes, but what about all these people who just want a, a photo of their dog on the set? It's like, that's great. That's for somebody else. That's not your clientele. So the way I would have done it, I'd have gone like this if, and this is what I told myself to do past me, because whatever your niche is and whatever it is you end up doing in photography, if you want to get to that high level where you're making a good income and you're not scrapping around at the bottom level, doing those jobs that kind of pay enough, but also the client's such a pain, it takes up so much time that you can't actually get enough of them into the week to make enough money to actually live a comfortable life. Um, that That's the rabbit hole you don't want to fall down. So let's say... For example, I'm starting again as a new photographer, I'm a new person, and I have my cat Moggy. Moggy is my life, and my girlfriend will confirm that. But I love cats. Right, great. So I love cats. So I probably want to do something with cats. You know, if you can think of it, you can photograph it, and therefore there is a client out there for you. Okay, so I like cats. What do I want to do with cats? Do I want to document them? Do I want to do... You know, I go, oh, you know, my, my visual preference is very bold and graphic. So I'm probably going to be doing studio stuff, you know, and I, I quite like extremely glamorous things. I'm very into ab fab and things like that. Maybe I'm going to dress them up in something or, you know, whatever it may be. And that's how I'd come up with it. And then once you've decided the, the vague parameters of it, you do it and you do it and you do it for five years, 10 years until you get to a point where you go, yes. Give me a subject and I can put it into my style. I am now at a point where I feel pretty confident that whatever subject is put in front of me, I can apply my style to it. Now, that's not my niche. My niche is the food in the graphic style. But I could apply my graphic style that I do to my food to any subject and have it looking like it's my work. And this is also something very important, something which has happened in the last three to four years. So I get a lot of messages from people going, so-and-so company is using your work. So-and-so is um, copying your work. And, th and they're not, it's not my work. It's someone else's work who has a similar uh, aesthetic to mine. But it's got to the point where people actually see it and go, oh, that must be Scott's work. And some of the clients I'm shooting for next week have booked me because they want my work. They've come to me and gone, here's what we have. Can you do it like you do it? And that is the dream job where one, the budget is there and two, the creative opportunity is there. When I was shooting at a lower level, when I was more generic in what I did, yes, there was some money there and, you know, it was okay. It wasn't as good as it is now, but, you know, there was money there. But also I had to do what they said and often I didn't agree with it because we didn't... Uh, our views didn't align. And you know, that, that's really important. Probably the reason you're going into a creative industry is because you're a creative person. You want to create what you want to create. If you wanted to be told what to do by somebody else, you'd go and get a nine to five. You know, and for me, that, that's not an option. I don't like doing that. Anyway, these are my thoughts on a niche. If you're struggling to find your niche, let me know in the comments below and let me know if there's anything I can do to help. And I'll try and do a follow-up video on this. Anyway, hope it's been of use to you. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.